Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll continue to build our Laravel 11 Rate with Vitify. In this video, we'll focus on creating the admin layout for our project as we have already set up the Vitify in the previous video. So let's dive into it. Alright, here is the current state of the project and we created this route for this page only to test the Vitify integration. So Laravel have already scaffolded the project with the sample pages such as the dashboard, the profile pages, and the authenticated pages. So for us to work on the authenticated layout, we need to register an account. So let's head over to the application and go to the register page. So here we can register an account. The layout is kind of a change because we have integrated the Vitify, but uh, we can create an account from here. So this is already built by the Laravel. All right, so this is the dashboard of the page. So as you can see here, we have the profile page. We can update the profile here, we can delete the account. Alright, enough with the preview and let's start updating the admin layout. So this is the route of our dashboard page and if we check the component, here we can see the authenticated layout which is already generated during the setup. The file is located in layouts folder inside our JS folder and I want to point out that when working on the layouts file, it is important to keep the slot element intact as this is where the content of our pages will be rendered. We'll remove the whole thing here and we will use the wireframe that we created previously, copy this code and paste it into the authenticated layout file. We can remove the content as well and we'll call the slot element here. We can now delete our test page since we no longer need it and we'll also remove its route. Let's visit the dashboard page and there you have it, the layout has been updated. What I actually like to do is to give each of our pages its own container, so we can structure the content better. Let me quickly remove the container in the layout file. We'll remove the existing content here and replace it with the Vitify elements. Add the dummy content here, so we can identify that this is the dashboard. Let's set the dashboard page aside for now and let us work on the layout file. Here I prefer to move the script tag at the bottom. Let us now work on the navigation drawer. We can add the color prop to change the color of the drawer. We can add our navigation list with the vlist component and for each of our nav item we'll use the vlist item component. We'll add a title prop here for the title of our nav item. Let's quickly check our drawer. Now we have the item. And remember, you can always visit the Vitify documentation to learn more about these components and understand them better. Okay, let's go back to our code. Let's actually add a nav prop on our vlist. Next, we'll add a click function to the vlist item by attaching a click event. We'll name the function open page and pass an argument for the path or the URL of the page. After that, we'll create the open page function to handle the navigation. We'll be using the Inertia View 3 adapter, which was also installed during the setup. To handle the navigation, we'll use the Inertia router. We'll call its get method and pass the path argument. This will allow us to navigate between pages seamlessly. Let's add a console log into our function to verify if it's working. Okay, seems to be working. Now let's add another navigation item for users. While we could simply duplicate the vlist item, I prefer to define the navigation items in a variable so we can loop through them. This approach keeps our code cleaner and more maintainable. Let's call it side navigation using ref. Inside it, we'll create an array of objects where each object represents a navigation item which will include the title, path, and the icon. This is the navigation item for the dashboard. 
and don't forget to import the icon for it. Now let's duplicate this item to create another one for the settings. Let's do the same for the users. Now we can use the side navigation variable in our VList item. We'll loop through the side navigation array using the v4 directive. Assign the title as the key for each of the item and we can remove the extra VList item here. Now assign the nav title into the title prop. Set the path on the open page function. Finally, to set the icon, we'll add the prepend icon prop and assign the icon here. Now let's check. The drawer looks good so far, but we need to fix the routes here. We're seeing a 404 error because we haven't created these paths and the corresponding components yet. To resolve this, let's start by creating the necessary components. Under the pages directory, we'll create an admin folder. We'll copy the dashboard component into our admin directory, then duplicate it to create the users component. This folder will serve as the dedicated location for all our admin pages. Next, let's start adding the routes in the web.php file. We'll update the dashboard page route to point to the component inside the admin directory. Same goes to the users component. And make sure to prefix these routes with admin as this is the way we set the path in our navigation. We'll keep the slash dashboard route unchanged for now as it is used to redirect users after they log in. Let's just redirect it to admin slash dashboard. We'll revisit and configure this later when we update the authentication pages. The sub navigation items are working as expected, except for the settings item. I want the settings to act as a parent item, meaning it can have sub items nested underneath it. Let me quickly show you what I mean in the Vitify documentation. So search for the VList group component. It's designed for scenarios like this that has an expandable sub items. Here's how it will look and you can find the code here. So let's go back and update the side navigation variable. Let's add a new key to the array of objects called sub. This key will hold an array of objects where each object represents a sub item for the parent navigation. Now we can just move the user's item as a sub item here. And then we can delete the path on the settings as it doesn't have to redirect somewhere else. Now let's move on to the template. I don't want to board you on the coding part, so I'll just walk you through the approach I came up with. So in our VList element, I used a div tag to loop through the side navigation variable. Then we will check if the item has a subs key. I changed the name by the way and make sure to change your code as well. So if the item has a subs key, it will render the VList group. Otherwise, it will render the standard VList item. Next, let's work inside the VList group. We'll use a template element to render the activator, which will act as a parent item. Then, we'll loop through the subs array to dynamically render the sub items. I reduced the size of the icon to visually indicate that this is a sub item. So if you're following along, feel free to pause here. And once you're ready, we'll check our updated side navigation. Our side navigation looks really good now with that simple code. It feels like a cheat code for perfect UI. The next thing we need to do is to add a logo. I want the logo to be circular, so we'll use the V avatar component inside it. We'll add a V ING element. Let's grab a sample image from the Beautify docs and then paste it into the source prop of the image element. Then let's set the size of our logo. So here's our logo. Now let's quickly fix the spacing to make sure everything looks neat. Alright, I really like how it looks now. In the next video, we'll explore how we can persist our admin layout, including the side navigation. As you can see, when we click on a nav item, there's a flicker in the logo. 
This happens because the admin layout is being re-rendered every time we switch pages. So meanwhile, please like the video if you found it helpful. And don't forget to subscribe for more updates. In the next one, we'll dive into persisting the admin layout. So thanks for watching and I will see you.